All right, fighthype.com. Sean Tatel here, joined with the two time cruiserweight champion of the world, my man Steve, USS Cunningham. Steve, thank you so much for joining me, man. Before we oh, get to man. boxing, how you doing, man? How's everything? Great, man. I'm doing good. Uh, just, you know, always training, trying to break into this bare knuckle. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's that's a little venture I want to take. You know, I want to uh, fight fight their champion. It, it, it doesn't matter. It'd be dope just to get one of those belts, you know, legendary stuff. man. That's what I'm going after. Um, or even, you know, get a couple more fights. But, I mean, outside of that, um, you know, training my son, Steve Jr., USS Jr., he is uh, about to turn pro um, at 154. And... Shake the world up, man. I'm telling you, that kid is special. I ain't just saying that because he's my son. He got some – the way he thinks on boxing is crazy. So that's it. Uh, you know, I got my son, Cruz, um, who's top rated in the country. You know, we're getting ready for December. Big time nationals and uh, family, man. Wife, kids, trying to trying to stay afloat. Mm -hmm. Holding on with both hands. Shout out to Brother Nazim. Yeah, absolutely. Rest in peace to Brother Nazim. Yeah. Um, and your kids had good amateur backgrounds. They they got good amateur backgrounds heading into the pro. Yeah, junior. Um, junior was like rated top rated number three, number four one year. You know, uh, bronze medal, national golden gloves. A lot of people say he should have got. He should have been in that championship. But you know how that goes. So we got the bronze medal last year. Um, he's always like top. You know, in the top semifinals or something. So. Um, I thought it was time for he's 19. He'll be 20 in the November. So I'm like, ah, it's time to turn pro. You know, he was getting discouraged. You know, all these tournaments are kind of coming up short with these crazy decisions. So I'm just like, bro, I see him, I see him kicking butt in the gym with pros. You know, I see him tearing dudes down, breaking them down. So like, let's go. It's time. Did you tell him, hey, son, it happened to me against Adam at a couple times. It happens. Don't oh, let it discourage. Oh, they know. They were there. They saw everything, man. They yeah. were there. And I used my my career as as like a, a fine, uh, as a, you know, as the the foundation of what I'm talking about, because I did it. They saw me do it. They're there. They were there with me in the gym. They saw the work I put in. Um, so Junior had about 70 plus amateur fights. Mm. Uh, my son Cruz, he's got about 30, 40, he's 11 right now, three-time national champ. And then I got another son, um, Messiah. He's just five, but he's, he's hitting the bag and stuff. So I got another one. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. Three-time national champ at 11. Yeah, yeah. Hey, okay, bright. And there, there are kids out there that's 10-time by the right. school, you know, but still, that national thing is something good to, to have under your belt. 100%. Three times at 11 years old. But um, yeah. but but to the father of the clan, to the, you know, to yourself, Steve, uh, yeah. I have, you know, everyone over here is talking about Fury and Usyk. But did yeah. you have a chance when Tyson Fury was on Joe Rogan and he said, my toughest fight, was Steve Cunningham. It was a cruiserweight. His speed, he was outboxing me. He dropped me. Did you get a chance to see it when Fury said all that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, you know, I came home and my wife was like, look at this. You know, she had it recorded for me. And I was just like, yo, because, you know, it's just Fury's the dude. He's the man, you know? Mm -hmm. And and I give him, you know, give him his props. You know, I can't, I can't take him away from him. You know, I, people, his fans are brutal, you know. If you say anything bad about Fury, bro, you're done. <laughs> you're dead meat, and you better leave the comments. Just delete it. But, you know, I will tell people, or I have told people, like, yo, Fury cheated to beat me, you know. He, that was out of side of boxing and beat me, but whatever. Congratulations. Um, but hearing him say, like, yo, Steve Cunningham was my hardest fight. That was kind of like vindication, you know, vindication for him. Not validation, but vindication. Um, it, I was his hardest fight. He had to do what he had to do to win. And for him to say that, him being on top of the world and still is kind of, yo, man, that's fire, you know, because every time he fights, that keeps me relevant. That keeps my name out there. And um, it goes to show the work of a smaller man, you know, and that's why I, I have my, that's why I have the way I think with this Fury Usyk fight, man, you know. How do you think about the fight? Because people were saying, okay, he said the cruiserweight gave him his toughest fight. Maybe this cruiserweight Usyk will beat him. Will pull off the mm. upset. What do you think, Steve? So I, this fight is tricky. It's a it's a it's a tricky one. It's crafty. To I mean, anybody who says oh Usyk's going to win, Fury's going to win. You know, it's like come on, man. Like you're not really watching either of them. You know, there there are there are components that they both have to win, and there are areas where you can see both of them can can lose. Now 
uh, I am I am leaning a little bit more towards a Usyk split decision than I am a Fury win because one we, Fury isn't knocking people out. You know what I mean? Fury Fury hasn't. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me strike that from the record. Fury isn't knocking everyone out. You know, uh, in order he he KO'd me with the you know and he had to, he had to pin me. He had to hold me still. Hey, I'll get you there. You know, um, Deontay Deontay Wilder. He got Wilder. Um, and we know Wilder's cardio wasn't that, you know, up to par. And that's so Otto Valine went 12, who was the southpaw. Right, right. So exactly. So you you got you got Usyk. Let me start off with Usyk. Usyk, 6'3, um, my height, similar height, same height. Um, very athletic. Usyk, Usyk is a better me, you know, a south because he's southpaw. He's 6'3", cruiserweight champ. Shit, it better me because he became, he's undisputed. You know, he's, I, Usyk is better than me. So when he fights Fury, this is there's two reasons why I got Usyk to win. One, when Usyk fights Fury, his angles are unbelievable. Usyk's, Usyk's angles, his movement, his brain, his mental, his boxing uh, mentality is off the charts. Um, his fortitude is great. He's going to get in there and use angles and movement. Uh Fury and Joshua are not the same. Anybody looking, everybody, anybody thinking because Joshua's big too, that's the way he's going to fight uh, Fury. No, it's not. It shouldn't be. Number two with Usyk. The one reason, the second, the last and most powerful reason I believe Usyk is going to be able to get over on Fury is because Usyk has power behind him. And I'm not talking about in his punches. I'm talking about the business side of boxing. Oh, People okay. have to realize Fury is allowed to do all of that stuff. Look at the Wilder fight. And it's a good tactic, but but it should be called. It should be called upon. Boom, boom, boom. Lay on you. Boom, boom, boom. Lay on you. He, I mean, and it's a great tactic because it. what does it do? It drains your, your opponent. It drains it, the guy he's fighting. Third, fourth round. Look look what it did to Wilder. You and, know, and Emmanuel Wilder. used to teach that to Lennox and Vlad, right? Exactly. Yeah, but, so, so when you, but, but when you had, and when he did it to me, rest in peace to uh, referee Eddie Cotton. Um, Eddie Cotton took a point or two. He took a couple points, and he's right. like, "Yo." So now and he took a couple I, points from Lennox Lewis too against Mike Tyson. Right. Exactly. So, right. so when you, so when you look at Steve Cunningham fighting Fury, Steve Cunningham, I, I didn't have a promotional team that really was behind me at that time. I didn't, my manager was my wife. <laughs> it was us. We were doing our own thing. So we didn't have any, any power in that area of any strings to pull or anything to, uh, you know, anything to make this, our, our side stronger. It was just us and my skill and the power that the mental power that Livy, Nazem and myself worked as the management team. Now you got Usyk. Usyk's got Egus. I think, I think Egus is his manager, right? Yeah. Bro. Talk about power. Talk about powerful. This is what I'm saying. People fail to look at that side of boxing. Egus is a general <laughs> out here. You know, you see all the guys he has. That They're not going to allow Fury to do that to Usyk. The money that they have, the power to pull, the influence that they have, they're, they're going to call Fury on those shots. I mean, on those, uh, on that, on those tactics. And either it's going to be a big thing in the in the fighter meetings on building up to the fight amongst them behind the scenes, amongst the officials. And and if and when it happens in the fight, Fury going to get, end up getting DQ because he's going to have to. Listen, Fury has to do that to Usyk in order to win. Fury doesn't beat Usyk by standing back boxing him. Usyk wins that fight. Usyk wins that fight. Now, if Fury, if Fury wants to walk him down and try to dog him That's out. That's what he had to do to you after you dropped him. Exactly. But 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 I still was able to move and move, but he still had to pin me. Now, when I was doing it, it was it was it was working. And then he was still getting some of those lean-ins. So I was getting a little drained, but I always get a second and third win. So I'm like, all right, let me make it out this round. I'm gonna be cool. But then it yeah, boom. So it was like game over. But but with Usyk. They they seen, I guarantee you, my fight is going to be one of their um, uh, one of their ledgers. You know what they're going to be looking at, what they're going to watch. It's going to be, it should be, you know, because that was a great blueprint. I just wasn't prepared for a guy like Fury. Hats off to Fury because he is special. Six nine, that athletic, the way he thinks, the way Fury thinks, I'm gonna get this crap done no matter what. 
shoot, oh, oh, I, oh, boom, boom, oh, he's hit me. Okay, okay, now I'm just pinning him out. I'm going to lay on him, I'm draining. All right, he's still moving, got him, ah, boom. He figures it out. That's the thing about Fury. So that's why I say I believe it's going to be a possible split decision win for Usyk. Or it could be a disqualification, mm. you know, because – I don't think I don't think they're gonna allow Fury to do what he does, you know. And that's that's how Fury gets those wins. It's a, like I said, it's a good tactic. Um, it's it's rough fighting. It's it's borderline illegal, but you can't get called on it. And I that's what I, I think. Now hold up, one last thing in the in the memory of Brother Nazim. And oh man, so you can ask the guys at my gym. I'm telling you, I'm like, hey, that Fury Usyk fight. This is right before and right after Joshua. So I knew Usyk was going to beat Joshua for the second time. I'm like, the Fury Usyk fight doesn't happen. And everybody's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, it don't happen. I'm like, listen, that's a very hard fight for Fury. It's very hard. Guys our size, we are 6'3. That means we're 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 tall enough to 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 reach the big guys, and we're big enough to have power to get them out of there. You see what I did to Fury? Uh, and I stunned Fury a few times in that but fight. But does Usyk have the power you have? That's the thing. You, Usyk doesn't throw shots like that. You Usyk, really, right? You American style sat down yeah. on. Him. He likes to so, touch, but, touch, touch, touch. You know, and he'll sit on one or two of them here and there. On, but, but right, and but I don't think he needs that because and and really, if he did, it wouldn't work. You know, Fury. That's what I'm saying. To to the uh, credit of Fury and his team, his uncle uh, Peter Fury. They brought me over in training camp. I think it was two months after we fought. They flew me over there because he was getting ready for David Hay. And his uncle was like, listen, we need you to throw that overhand right. We need to we need to learn how to defend from that. And I was like, that's some ingenious crap right there, you know? Um, so I was over there working, sparring with him, mm, launching it. And, and they got a defense for it. So that knockdown, the knock, Fury, and Fury has evolved. Fury has upgraded big time since my since I last fought him. Right. Uh, so that's not going to happen. You know, you, you're you going to – Usyk, that's why I said Usyk is perfect because Usyk doesn't go for those knockouts. Usyk is a volume puncher. Now, don't, now don't get it twisted. I guarantee you those volume punches have power. <laughs> he hitting hard. But um, but back to Nazim. So Nazim said, listen, in order for a fighter who doesn't want to fight you – well, I mean, I'm sorry. For – if a fighter doesn't want to fight another fighter, he doesn't want to look like, you know, he's scared of him. He doesn't want to look like he's worried about him. What will he do? He'll overprice himself. Exactly. And you did you see the, the, the tweet from Fury? Was it yesterday? $500 million. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, as soon as I read that, I was like, not nice him. You mother freaker. You know what I mean? So, that, yo, $500 million. Nobody wasn't paying $500 million for Joshua Fury. And that's a better fight. That's a more exciting fight than, than Usyk. Um, beforehand afterhand it will it be different but because the performance that's going to be put on by both men but on paper joshua versus fury that was only what 50 million then it got up to 100 million after a while mm -hmm. and that was it they, they, they it wasn't going anymore you know dude you ain't getting no you fight. don't think he's just talking you think he's kind of trying to price himself out the fight yeah that's yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think that i do think that i mean but it's one of them things shit i'll price myself out the box but if they're willing to pay it, <laughs> right. you know, you get that joint in Dubai, the, the mugs in Dubai probably shell that off with no problem, you know. But on the scale of, yo, this is a difficult fight. I don't know. I'm not 100. Shoot. This dude just, he just, he just beat Joshua twice. Man, I'm a, man, give me 500 million. I don't really care to fight. Fury don't really care to fight Usyk, you know. So it's like, man, I don't, I'm, I'll just do this for the money. Give me five hundred million. Overprice himself. Fights off. Fury. Fury probably come back after Usyk. Because who's Usyk going to fight after? You know, if, if Fury. I like happen. the Wilder fight if Wilder looks the same in October. Right. That that's the, that's the thing. That's the thing. He's yeah. got to he's got to send Hellenius home with a pillow. He has to, you know, in order for me to be like, all right, that Wilder's back or. I knew Malik Scott is in there training him and, 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 and getting him right on some technical stuff. If he goes in there and he wins the 12-round decision and, and Wilder's boxing his brains out, then, okay, that's 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 an elevation too. But if he looks the same and it goes to the decision, nah, bro. We, we, you know, we, we need to, I need to see what type of Wilder we're going to fix. That was some serious-ish, those, those Fury Wars. Yeah, yeah, that could take a pound of flesh out of you. Easy, both yes. fighters. Yes, so. yes.
But uh, but with Steve, I don't want to hold you up too much longer because you gave us so many gems. I really hope we could do this again for other big oh, fights. Whenever, man. Is is there anything, any more jewels you want to drop on us before you get out of here, man? Uh, I mean, nah, just uh, I mean, hey, boxing is great. I hope that Spence Crawford fight you know happens. I yeah. totally do. I hope um, uh, I'm 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 praying for. Cambooses. I mean, I'm sorry, not Cambooses. I hope Devin. Devin should be Cambooses again. Yeah. Um, he's going to do it different this time. I see. You see what Devin did that first fight. He just used that jab. My, my, he's so educated. We're going to see the whole arsenal in the rematch, right? Right, right. Right he's hands, gonna... uppercuts, check hooks. Yeah, it's a possible stoppage this next fight. Um, because I don't, I don't see Cambooses doing anything different. You know, um, so I would like to see Devin Haney, Tank, Garcia. Lomachenko, uh, Stevenson, my goodness. Yo, I love Stevenson, man. That boy is, he's hes sick, man. Like, he's so good. He's going to be one of them guys, he's so good that I don't think people understand what they see, you know? That's how thats how dope Shakur Stevenson is to me. Maybe it's because he's not it. super, super flashy. He's just yeah, so but, technically yeah, right. sound that, yeah. But was Lomo, you know what I mean? Was Loma, so yeah, with that those those quick, sharp movements, I guess. But outside of that, was he super flashy? And he got all the fanfare, you know? So, you know what I mean? Well, you know, that's a whole other. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole other can of worms, you know? But <laughs> So, so Stevenson, man, he's, he's seriously dope. Now, his, the way he keeps the distance is it's bananas man so i'd love to see those group of guys man like man we need a we need like a, a super six with them that'd be that now now let's talk about some 500 million fury <laughs> you know yeah. but yeah. um yeah outside of that man um just you know uss junior guys keep an eye out my son steve jr he's turning pro should be in october and um he's a he's a southpaw too tricky very intelligent and uh, he really uh, works hard at this. And lastly is USS Comics, man. For those who don't know, man, I started my uh, comic book company. I turned fighters, champions, former champions into superheroes. Uh, I finished the three-part story about me and Mansoor, our comic book. That's three parts. I got Austin Trout right now. I'm finishing up two-part story. Danny Garcia's on board. Oh, let's go. Rod Jennings. Um, get some Ennis, some Philly. Let's get an Ennis. Yeah, yo, oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm, He's I'm even got the superhero him. name Boots. Like, yeah, yeah Boots. Yeah, mm -hmm. right, right. Uh, Shannon Briggs is on board. I got Frank Mears on board for my first MMA champ. So, um, man, just got a, USS Comics on every platform, baby. So that's that's basically it for me. Well, you look like a damn superhero. So, yo, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the things that motivated me to. Uh, to do it, you know, because of course I drew when I was in high school. I was an art major, and um, then you know everybody like, man, you look cut up like a superhero, man. I was like, hmm, let me try, let me stop messing around. This thing's been ten years in the making, you know, just doodling, sk uh, sketching around, and it came up with a story. Well, I hope it keeps blowing up and getting bigger and bigger, man. Thank you so much for giving us your time, Steve. Thank yep. you. Hey, man, appreciate it. No problem. And, and again, R.I.P. to brother Nazim. Yeah, no doubt, man. Legend. Thank you, brother. All right, bro.